liftoff, liftoff of Discovery, the first flight totally dedicated to Department of Defense mission. And it's cleared the tower. Good evening, I'm Tom Brokaw with NBC Nightly News. That was the site today at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida when NASA launched the Space Shuttle Discovery on its most mysterious and controversial trip yet. It is carrying a spy into the sky, a sophisticated spy satellite, which will listen in on the Soviet Union. The military had hoped the mission would be classified. However, a great deal of detail about the satellite came out in congressional testimony and technical journals. As for today's launch, well, a Russian tourist on a Florida beach 100 miles away could have called the Kremlin with the liftoff time. We have two reports tonight on the launch and the satellite. First, Robert Bazell, then Fred Francis. For hours today, as Discovery was on the pad ready to go, the countdown clock showed nothing, and there was little commentary. Then suddenly... T-minus nine minutes and counting. The launch events are now being controlled by the ground launch sequencer. For nine minutes, there was the usual commentary from launch control. But the communications of the astronauts and ground controllers were not broadcast as they have been on all previous manned seconds. space flights. Nine, eight, seven, we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one, ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Discovery, the first flight totally dedicated to Department of Defense mission. The Discovery appeared to head east, but its course on takeoff and the orbit it will follow are secret. The vehicle now turning around to the proper... A voice from Mission Control in Houston described the usual post-launch maneuvers which put the shuttle into orbit. Main engines, all running at normal pressures. And then there was silence, as there will be for the rest of this mission. No sound and no pictures. Tomorrow, the astronauts will release a satellite from Discovery's cargo bay. According to several reports, the satellite will monitor radio transmissions, telephone calls, and other electronic signals in the Soviet Union and other countries. The Air Force has said that the purpose of the secrecy is to prevent the Soviets from tracking the satellite. Many intelligence experts outside the government say the Soviets will have no problem despite the precautions. But the military has sent a message with this shuttle mission. It wants its operations in space kept secret from now on. Even the length of the mission is secret. The landing time will be announced only 16 hours in advance. Robert Bazell, NBC News, Cape Canaveral. What this Soviet officer sees in the field and then reports by radio can be intercepted, decoded, and translated by American intelligence. The science of spying on the Soviets has been that good for years. With today's launch, it will get better. The new satellite is reportedly called Aquacade. It will join four or five other signal intelligence satellites called SIGINTS already up there. But Aquacade is special. It has the capacity to scoop up the entire radio frequency spectrum, microwave traffic, and other communications. It can take selected signals and transmit them in short bursts to a listening post in Pine Gap, Australia which in turn relays the Soviet signals to the National Security Agency at Fort Meade, Maryland for interpretation. National Security Specialist James Banford says all those signals can be in American hands almost instantaneously. Uh, it'll be able to pick up weaker signals because it'll have larger antennas. And it'll probably have a better uh, ability to relay that information in, uh, in real time to, to the Earth. The new satellite is also special because it's reported by space experts that it can be maneuvered while in orbit, making it very difficult for the Soviets to locate. Those commands come from this satellite control facility at Sunnyvale, California. It is from Sunnyvale that we oversee the growing fleet of spy platforms, not only to hear, but also to watch and feel what the Soviets are up to. Today's mission is the first of 16 military shuttle flights in the next five years, launching more advanced technology into space to build America's intelligence network. Fred Francis, NBC News, the Pentagon. And within two years, the shuttle may have a new competitor. A group of engineers and undertakers is making plans to send into orbit the ashes of dead people. Same part of the quest for the high ground of military defense. It was a most unusual launch day. There was secrecy, censorship, and tight security. Photo IDs were required and double-checked. Visitors were summarily turned away at the gate. Yes, sir, the visitor center is closed today because of the launch. 
There were none of the usual VIPs. In fact, there was no VIP area at all. In the press building, no information sheets and no comments. Uh, I don't believe I'm allowed to discuss that. Cameras were kept three miles away to hide possible clues on the launch time. And through much of the day, a huge steel structure blocked most views. Eventually, the astronauts came out of their quarters and made their way to the launch pad. That normally means a launch is less than three hours away. However, three hours later, nothing. Finally, after another half hour, the first announcement. T minus nine minutes and counting. And the official countdown clock was turned on, along with all of the NASA cameras for the actual lift launch. Off. Lift off of Discovery, the first flight totally dedicated to Department of Defense mission. After a cursory announcement that the shuttle had reached orbit, the information blackout resumed. It was a return to no comment to all questions about the $300 million military spy satellite that will be used to eavesdrop on Russian communication systems. Has the satellite been launched? <laughs> I think that's a good note to stop on. Bruce Hall, CBS News, at the Kennedy Space Center. Word from the Pentagon today that it is conducting several investigations of what it considers to be news leaks about the U.S. spy satellite carried aloft today. And the Pentagon says no lie detector tests have been given to anyone yet. See, came just after 11.30 as the silver van carrying the shuttle's crew openly drove them to the pad. That meant about three hours until liftoff. But the quiet press site and the silent NASA speakers would have fooled anyone who'd seen the excitement before other launches. It wasn't until NASA made the countdown public with nine, oops, just over eight minutes to go, that reporters and photographers knew anything for sure. And at 2.50 p.m., there was nothing left to hide. Seven, we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one. Ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Discovery, the first flight totally dedicated to Department of Defense mission. With barely a cloud to block the way, Discovery charged into orbit, leaving its signature column of smoke behind. Two and a half minutes later, you could see the solid rocket split away with the naked eye. But the brilliant blue sky was the only clear thing once Discovery got into orbit. The Pentagon has encoded all conversations between astronauts and the ground and NASA was obviously uncomfortable with its new role. Within that three-hour period that we were given, how long was your actual launch window? Uh, I don't believe I'm allowed to discuss that. That's because of the secret military cargo Discovery is carrying, widely reported to be a spy satellite that will be launched sometime during this mission. NASA won't tell us much more about this flight until 16 hours before it lands. We do know that's meant to happen right here. Lynn Scher, ABC News at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida.